no one's here. So I would bet possibly this one here is it. Wastrum. Yeah. I've seen these before. Cracker Tucky uses these. Things fall out and fall down in the bottom. Well, it's turned off, so I'm assuming that this is probably the reason why. It's probably got some problems. Shoot. See what's going on here. video camera decided to record in elapsed mode. We went ahead and cleaned up this fan blade. It was pretty nasty looking. We're going to get this thing set up in there. The shaft is just a little bit longer on this one here, but we can trim that down. Not a big deal. We've already checked for leaks down here. Did not find anything. Same thing over here. Nothing was found. It could be just because the evaporator fan's not running. We're just going to get this replaced. Like I said, it's not running. It's jammed up. It just looks like crud. That's what we're in the process of doing is replacing it. I went ahead and plugged it in and seen which direction it went. And it seems to be going the correct direction to blow it out of the coil box and set it down below it. We'll have to reuse these fancy connectors. They're nice and waterproof. If you wanted to switch the direction around, you just literally pop that thing apart like that right there, switch it around. It's just basic bushings for bearings, which is anything but fancy. That looks like it should clear that from shortening into it, which works out good. But it's going to get us out of a pickle here, and that's that's what matters, because we don't want any relish. Now you can see that that's above the front of that. You want it to be behind it. You don't want it to be out in front of my hit. Now if we take this and put it up against it, you can see that it clears it, not by a lot, but it does clear it. I think I'm going to go ahead and trim off this little bitty piece there just in case. That'll make it easier. That little device there, it's not every day you use it, but there's several times where it comes in handy. All right, now that should fit in there a little bit better. Let's press that thing back on there. And... ends up pressing on all corners including the center that way you ain't gonna break it but we got plenty of clearance now plenty of clearance we'll clean that up there too it's got a little bit of mold bucket stuff on it and that looks a little bit better there we go just need to adapt these power wires here I've got females but that nice rubber there is a lot nicer than the rubber actually not even rubber it's plastic that is on the ones that I've got so we'll just go ahead and trim these up a touch and uh, put a butt connector on it. Extra precaution here. We'll go ahead and run some tape around it. 
keeps them out of the fan blades and makes it a little less noticeable. Use the good 3M Scotch tape, Super 33 Plus. They cram that damn TXV head right in there. They don't leave you. We got an extra freaking room here at all. all right, there's one of the longer ones. Accidentally. No, I don't think it's fit for crap either. This must be it. There we go. Now it's in there. And it rotates all right let's plug this thing back in and see if it uh, it's got motor operation now unfortunately we lost the beginning what we found was the system was low on refrigerant or at least it looked like it was the cycle glass was half full almost completely down to the bottom quarter this thing wasn't blowing it's running crazy fast now if they don't like that we'll have to order another one but at least this will get them going all right, good. Let's see if this thing's pumping yet. Yep, it's a pumping. And if you look at the sight glass there, it still looks low. We've already scanned for leaks. Didn't find anything. It's got TXV, which we already seen on the inside. Condenser coil's got a little, not too bad. It's got a little coating on it. We'll brush that off. Try to get that with this metal brush, which I usually don't use, but since it looks like cat hair, which I'm sure it's not, got into that tight spot really well. Might as well as check the high side while we're at it, since we're uh, going to be charging us basically off the sight glass, which generally you can't do on little systems, so they don't usually have a receiver like this. Very unusual. You can tell it's a better built unit, even if it is got uh, a small leak somewhere that we didn't find. Yes, I know I'm using the pliers backwards. You can do that with these pliers. I made the mistake before in the past of not checking high side when I've added to a system and just charged till full sight glass and it's bit me in the butt to where I didn't realize the head pressure was skyrocketing high. The coil looked like it was clean and it wasn't. So if I've got time to do it I prefer to do it that way. I don't think it's so low that we needed to shut it off and then turn it on that way that, you know, we aren't sucking anything in, especially when running 404. Go ahead and bleed it. Good deal. Nine ounces. That's a fairly decent sized leak. And pressure is about 105 degrees getting there seeing the little bit of flutter in there so there's right at one pound we'll let it run for a bit and then we'll end up uh, adding just a little bit more so we'll add maybe about three ounces two ounces more don't want to get too crazy head pressure holy crap we are running 120 degree evaporator it ain't that warm in here now granted it's coming down it was getting a little bit of you know saturated liquid when we were charging it that uh, coil's got it's pumping some heat maybe it forced it in a little too quick but let her stabilize as it starts to come down in temperature the pressure will come down too right now it's a you know full warmth box you know it's 60 some degrees I think yeah, we're at 61 degrees right now. Running 28 evaporator. Let's see if that makes it a little easier to see. Yeah, that's a little easier. It's coming down. It's coming down. We'll let this run for a little bit. We may have to rescan it. Maybe hit it with the H10 and see if it finds it. Things are looking a lot better now. Got a nice solid side glass. Everything's good to go. Like I said, just got to scan this thing over real quick one more time. 
um, itsy bitsy tiny ones. You know, this was worked on. I don't know what E and R means, but back in uh, 16, five years ago, something was done. All right, we're bringing it back out of retirement. We're at 35 degrees already, so we must got that working okay. Let's go ahead and shut this thing down. One of the problems with that is, is the thing's running, you're at your lowest pressure possible for that evaporator. And so you're not going to get near the leakage. But, I mean, even disconnecting the hoses, making sure I didn't bleed anything out when I did it, I can still tell it's speeded up a couple times just because it knows it. And that's something that only an analog detector can pick something up like that. You heard it just change right there. Now it could be because of the temperature difference. Let's go ahead and pull these back out. All right, let's make sure she's tuned in. That's about where you want it at. You want to hit about out in the okay mark. I'm a little hot. It's a pretty decent sensor. It's maybe a year and a half old, something like that, two years. I haven't been using this thing much because I've been using the DTEC Select Stratus, DTEC Stratus most of the time. Now, the one thing I know about this detector, if there's any leak in here, this thing would have gotten it and it would have went berserko. Which makes me feel better because my Stratus, or actually I was using the DTEC 3 today just because it was easier to reach than it was to get to the other one. It was on the shelf behind a bunch of stuff. And I'm not getting anything. Nothing up in this area. I mean, if, it, if it's if I got to be right on it with this detector, it's all right. Well, I'm not too worried about the evaporator, and that's generally where it leaks at. And I don't, you know, I can tell you, they likely do not keep any vegetables in this area. This is going to be more meats. And generally that doesn't leak as often. Let's scan the condenser. Nothing on the sight glass, nothing on the back side. Take us to a little bit higher tick rate. About there's where I like it at. Usually down in here is where you're going to get your leaks at. Get all up in that area here. We got bellows that leak. Yeah, anything that we got to st strategically do at this crazy, it's uh, something that might have been happening for a long, long time. I would say if it's leaking anywhere, it would be down in this coil where they've got the uh, hot gas lines. I was kind of reluctant to stick the probe in there too much. There's some oil looking stuff down in here. That could be out of that motor, but that sure looks like oil right there. It could be just water, It was because there was water in it earlier. Maybe it evaporated. It sure kind of looks like oil. Well, I am pretty convinced that if it is a leak, which obviously it must be somewhere, it's not going to leak out in a week or two or a month or two even. It's going to be a while. But like I said, this is a really nice unit. Uh, don't see a bunch of them. I think they're definitely probably more high end. You can tell this customer really likes good equipment. He's got South Bend ovens. Uh, he's got Hajisaki cooler over there, Hajisaki ice machine. Uh, he's got some good stuff. Um, but this one here, like I said, we did what we did. Everything's working good. I'm going to leave him a copy of what I did and uh, the motor itself so he can see it. Uh, we've got down there the temperature, which I think, let's see what our set temperature is here set. 34. So it's set for 34 degrees. Hard to know how all these stupid things work. Too many dang different controls. But like I said, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, let's go ahead and get on to the next call.